Another juicy, jam-packed Tuesday episode awaits us on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, and there is no shortage of hot topics to get to. Jake Gensel, Joseph Wall, TJ Oshie, Valerie Nachushkin, and a little Hart Trophy look-in. Of course, Tuesday's betting breakdown. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back inside the lab to your daily source for fantasy hockey news and degenerate gambling breakdowns. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Shout out to the everydayers and everyone holding us down Monday through Friday and making us your first listen every single day. Couldn't be doing it without y'all, and I am extra fired up than usual, believe it or not, on today's episode because there is so, so much to get to. But today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get a 100 bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Giddy up, my friends, hockey heads, degenerate gamblers. We here, and it's a big, big Tuesday episode with so much to get to that I'm going to have to try and speak a little bit faster than I usually do. I know people out there like, Flip, slow your roll. You're going to pop off, but that's because I have to. Jake Gensel, this is going to be a big thing for this Pittsburgh Penguins club and fantasy GMs out there. He's skating again, tracking toward that four- to five-week timeline that we thought he'd be. We'll check in on Gensel quickly. Joseph Wall returns to the N- to the NHL with the Toronto Maple Leafs. We'll mention that quickly. TJ Oshie update. I got to talk about the Colorado Avalanche as well because this is a team very much mentioned at the trade deadline to be active, but what if they don't have to do as much because they got bodies coming back? Valerie Nachushi in for sure. He's back skating with the club, being cleared for practice. We'll talk about it. Landishkog, obviously much more off the radar, probably not returning anytime this regular season, but we're going to talk about it. That's an update that we haven't touched on yet and a heart trophy look in. Everybody's talking about it, so you know I got a few things to say about this three horse race. For the Hart Trophy, McKinnon, Kucherov, and Matthews. I'm going to break it down. Tuesday's bets. We got it all going on today, my friends. And I'm extra fired up because Steele will be back on Wednesday's episode. We're going to talk a lot more about trade deadline and the playoff push coming up at the end of the week and keeping you tapped in with all the fantasy news that you need, which is why I'm going to start with Jake Gensel. Jake Gensel is in a very precarious situation when it comes to his value for the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is a team that when I look at the standings and I understand that in their last 10 games, I believe they're five, four and one. I'm going to check that right now. Five, four and one, two wins in a row. They've got a tough little schedule upcoming. They are a complete, like when you look at the wild card, they are now nine points back of Tampa who holds down that second spot. Tampa playing a lot better lately. Detroit holding down the top wild card spot at 70 points, 7 2 and 1. Patrick Kane doing special things. By the way, sidebar, what a special moment in Chicago for Patty Kane the other night. I didn't mention that on Monday's episode, but over the weekend, shout out to Patty Kane, the dirty dangler, one of the best to ever do it, especially in the American sense of things. But my goodness me, that's good to see. That's good for the NHL. Back to the Pittsburgh Penguins and Jake Gensel. Because Jake Gensel, at 52 points in 50 games this season, and what he does on the offensive end, and you take a look at teams like the Vancouver. Vancouver Canucks, Edmonton Oilers, and some other West Coast juggernauts that are seriously sniffing around for Gensel's services. This is one of those situations that as a fantasy GM, I alluded to it yesterday, if this situation pops off and you're not ready to do what you need to do and perhaps maybe trade Gensel, get a lot of value, or if you're in the running, make sure you're maximizing your lineup and getting Gensel right back in there to make sure you're going over the top. If he goes to a winner, my goodness me, you're going to be lucky and thankful that you put him on the IR and stashed him and didn't do anything silly. Because I think at 29 years old, a player with cups, playoff runs, he is going to come in and slot right into a top six and be an absolute darling. So that's all I need to say about Jake Gensel because he was injured. When was he put on LTIR? He hasn't played since February 14th. He's back skating with the club. And this is a Pittsburgh team that's also dealing with an injury to Brian Rust. And if they don't start to pick up wins with regularity, and I mean string together a little win streak here, that nine-point gap is just not going to be closed. They're not good enough on the back end. And I just don't think there's enough depth in the bottom six 
they move out Jake Gensel, I think it's going to be a waving of the white flag from Kyle Dubas. He's got to position this team well for the future, not just right now. So those are the angles with the Penguins and Jake Gensel. I'm done with that now. Let's move on just quickly because you see the color behind me and you see, you know, our where our allegiances lie. Joseph Wall is on the mend and he's back in the NHL. I'm not saying he's going to be immediately thrust into that blue paint because they've already been very, very patient. The 25-year-old played good in the in the AHL, third stopping all but one of 37 shots and a 4-1 victory over Laval on Friday. This is a player that was unflappable in his appearances in the NHL in the postseason and regular season. I know it's a small sample size, and I'm not ready to say Joseph Wall is going to come back and take this team to the promised land. They're already winning with Ilya Samsonov in the crease, who has a below 900 save percentage, even though he is getting wins. This is good news for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you know they're already getting wins. Joseph Wall coming back as an option in your goaltending lineup, it becomes a very good one. One that you can't ignore even if you want to hate on the Leafs in that patchwork blue line, which is two fair things to do for sure. Wall comes back. You got to keep an eye on him. Maybe don't throw him in there right away because as a rookie coming off of his first major injury, these are caveats that you have to understand will maybe affect his ability to come right back into the lineup. Something that TJ Oshie might not be doing for the next little while. He is week to week for the Washington Capitals. And I know there isn't a ton of fantasy value or takeaway here, but you know me, keeper dynasty, deeper formats. This is going to be a player that maybe some people out there had 10 goals, eight assists in 38 games this season's not jumping off the page but once again there are a lot of greasy dirty gritty formats out there where tj oshi is most definitely owned i think his number on fan tracks is still 30 or 40 percent let go of this guy i don't see it for the washington capitals down the stretch this isn't a hot take this isn't rocket science if this is a keeper dynasty angle and you have tj oshi and this is the only thing i need to say let him go hit the waiver wire check out yesterday's episode there are a lot of forward options chandler stevenson could work out nicely take a look i just wanted to mention it because he is a shootout and playoff stud now I'm going to get to the Colorado Avalanche in a hot minute. I'm going to get to the Hart Trophy watch in a heart, heart minute. Woo, that was pretty good. And big time bets, of course. But I also just want to quickly mention that Justin Falk was activated off long-term injured reserve for the St. Louis Blues and in time to play the Winnipeg Jets on Tuesday night. So Justin Falk, again, deeper formats. Obviously don't know what he's going to look like coming back off of long-term IR, but one of these situations that if you're a team in the top group looking for that loot, augment your lineup. Why not with a couple of veterans like Justin Falk coming back on the blue line? Just take a look. These are the angles that cannot be ignored, much like the rest of the episode where I'm going to break it all down for you. Avs, Hart Trophy, bets. Today's episode, my friends, you know it's brought to you by Sleeper, one of our favorite apps. It's almost a halfway point in the NHL season, and we're tapping in to the sleeper app every single night. Steele and I are loving it. Regardless of where you are in the current standings, you need to know you could be winning big by Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you got to do is pick whether studs like McDavid, McKinnon, Crosby, Ovi will record more or less than their Sleeper predictions for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus or anything in a given game. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a hundred bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and location availability. Giddy up, my friends. The fantasy grind doesn't stop. That's why our work as fantasy hockey GMs doesn't stop. Tapped into all the latest right now, feeling like Things are going to pop off in the NHL over the next couple of days in terms of moves. It feels like one of those holding pattern situations that maybe just one or two little moves or even a rumor or two could really open up the floodgates. And I mentioned teams like the Pittsburgh Penguins really trying to see what the on-ice product does to precipitate the off-ice moves. And take a look at this Colorado Avalanche team because... Yes, the first and biggest piece of news and latest is Valerie Nashushkin has been cleared by the NHL and NHLPA Player Assistance Program to resume, resume practicing with the Avalanche. Look, 
this Colorado Avalanche team, I'm not going to talk about Valerie Nishushkin's off-ice issues. Clearly, he's had them. When he's been in the lineup for this team over the past number of seasons, he has been a game-changing offensive product. And this season, when I take a look at Colorado's numbers, they're right there at the top of the league. They're third in overall scoring. And I believe, let me just pull this up. I, when I was looking at their power play, I think they're sixth or seventh. Seventh best power play in the league. And they haven't even had a guy in Nichushkin who this season had 13 of his 22 goals come on the power play. He's also been an absolute stud in the postseason. And that's what we're talking about right now. These injury updates, guys coming back or going out, really affect what the GMs in the front office are going to have to do ahead of that March 8th deadline. This isn't rocket science. I've said it before, but dig into Nichushkin's numbers in the postseason. I implore you because last year on that cup run, sorry, two years ago when they went to the cup final and won it, 16 points in 20 games for Nichushkin. If he comes back, and I'm going to talk about Landeskog in a second, that alleviates some of that pressure from the front office to maybe make a move for depth. You know they don't need the scoring, especially if you take a look at Gabriel Landeskog. If he is able to come back, speaking of playoff performers, look, he's skating again. This is part of the process. You heard Bednar, the head coach in Colorado. This isn't a shock for them. They know he's still a long way off. This is, was it cartilage surgery in his knee? Cartilage transplant in his right knee. Still not tracking to play in the regular season. However, when you talk about his postseason numbers, 27 goals and 40 assists for 67 points in 69 career postseason games. They get Nachushkin back clicking ahead of the postseason. He does his thing. They somehow manage to get into that playoff and go on a run, and Landishkog comes back at the end of the first round or even the second. This team might not have to make any moves other than the one we know they need the most, and that's in the blue paint. Because everything offensively is aligning for this Colorado team to do special things. But Alexander Gurgiev is seeing far too much rubber. He's already looked gassed, and this Colorado Avalanche team is quickly becoming one of those clubs that I really like betting overs in their games. Because looking at them, there are a lot of crooked number results, and it has to do with their lack of ability to get that big save. And it isn't really fully Gorgiev's fault, I'm going to say. There's no backup to be seen in Colorado. So... These pieces, Nachushkin, big for fantasy owners. He's going to come back, slot right back into that top six, onto the top power play, and bring elite fantasy production for you down the stretch. That's huge. Landishkog, obviously, it's not going to happen, but for this playoff push, and we're talking about bets, that could be a huge motivational swing, both on and off the ice, getting their captain back. These are angles i got to cover for fantasy, for betting, for anything. So you're tapped in. That's why I'm tapped in. Let's talk about this Hart Trophy race very quickly because I got to keep things short and tight without my boy Steele here. He will be back Wednesday's episode. Don't slip or slack. Make sure, by the way, drop us that five-star review. Hit us in the comments. Tap into the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Make sure you don't miss any of the latest episodes. And we really, really do appreciate all that feedback. By the way, I got to throw a quick plug out to the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, available on Amazon Fire TV and for free in the Fire TV channels app. They're doing special things with that 24-7 streaming service, so make sure you check it out. That's a little plug for the network. Back to business here, because as much as I'm sure you all out there listening are tapped into the league, I keep saying that, watching, listening, reading, one of the biggest conversation and talking points right now is this Hart Trophy race? And shout out to FanDuel. I got the FanDuel odds open right now for the Hart Trophy. Austin Matthews at plus 200. Nathan McKinnon at plus 230. And Nikita Kucherov at plus 250 is what everybody's talking about as this three-horse race. But don't count out Connor McDavid at plus 350. That's number one. Number two. When you talk about this three-horse race, I got to throw some love behind Nikita Kucherov, first and foremost. I love Nathan McKinnon. He's arguably been the best fantasy piece this year. Very much in that conversation for the best player in the league as well. Austin Matthews might score 70 goals. And we're not actually going to talk about him first, even though now he is the favorite according to FanDuel. I'm focusing on Nikita Kucherov, people. Looking at these numbers, shout out to Frankie Corrado of TSN here in Canada, making the point that Nikita Kucherov should already be perhaps at minus money to be the favorite for this trophy. This guy accounts for 50% or now more for all of Tampa Bay's total offensive output. Just think about that for a second. 50% of all of their offensive output. That right there, I think, might have to put him right in the conversation as the favorite. The fact that McKinnon and Matthews are ahead of him, I completely understand. But if you are like me, a bit of a degenerate, 
Plus 250 for Nikita Kucherov right now. He also just cracked triple digits in points. I'm going to bring that up to know exactly where he is because you know me and these numbers. But I know he did. 102 points for Nikita Kucherov. It's just an impressive number. Tampa Bay needs to play a little bit better in their own end, I would say, to make me think that this is one of those teams that along with the talent they have in Kucherov and him probably deserving this love, but I need to see more out of them before I'm ready to hang the real hardware on them in the Stanley Cup. However, Nikita Kucherov is going to be at the center of that. So I just wanted to mention that point and that this Hart Trophy race is one that's heating up. And when you look at the standings, Tampa Bay, Colorado, Edmonton, and then David Pasternak in that mix as well. Boston, maybe not so much Toronto as much when you mention those other teams. But they're all legitimate playoff threats, and you can't help but feel their performance pushing towards a trophy is going to also push them into good playoff positioning. So had to mention the Hart Trophy. Got to mention those odds. Those are also three players absolutely cooking right now. And McDavid, four. Pasternak, five. Spicy, spicy times in the NHL, my friends, coming up around the break. However, spicy times for the bets. I got to try and keep this money train rolling because, yeah, Monday was a bit of an off night, but still been a good week, and I really, really am liking my Tuesday night bets. However, you know, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Camino Consulting. You've heard of our online families and couples course and taking advantage of the locked on 25% discount running to the end of the month. But what about the live seminars in both sport and business, the challenge in differentiating candidates and recruits is an endless battle. Everyone can demonstrate their measurables and qualifications, but we know it's the intangibles that matter the most when those things are similar. Contact Camino Consulting for their team and management seminars to get a peek behind the curtain. Get the best candidates that you've identified because you've learned how to communicate and motivate them in accord with their own preferences. But you aren't in business management for working with a team. We pay for referrals. Make money by making your workplace and your favorite teams better. Every group works together better at the end of the year. One, then, and week one. Contact Camino Consulting at CaminoConsulting.ca and get the fast track to understanding. My friends, another jam-packed episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. You know, I got to wrap it up with bets because that's what we do on this show. Make sure you're tapping in to the channel all week long, Monday through Friday. Right now, we're migrating over to a new podcast platform, which is why the last couple of episodes have been a little bit off on timing. We will be back to 7 a.m. in the morning every single day, Monday through Friday. So, much love to everyone holding us down. Shout out to the everydayers. You know what it is because Tuesday night, it's a super Tuesday, baby. It's a 12-game betting board. Let me dust off the old notepad here because you know I'm old school like that. 12 games on the board. I'm really liking all three of my bets. I'm laying a lot of juice here, people. Let's get it out of the way first and foremost. A lot of heavy favorites in this one, so put them all in a parlay. This is going to win. Say it. These three picks are going to bang, starting with Tampa Bay on the road into Philadelphia. Loving this angle so, so much. In Tampa Bay, minus 130 is a perfect odd. Let's get it. 8-2-0 and for the Tampa Bay Lightning in their last 10 against Philadelphia. And Tampa Bay are 13-6 and in their last 19 overall. Like I said, playing a lot better. They need to tighten the screws in the defensive end, and then why not them? For a Stanley Cup run themselves, one we know they've been there three times in the last bunch of years. And it gets even better. Over their last 15 against Philadelphia, 13 and two. How about eight straight dubs in the city of brotherly love? Eight straight road victories against Philadelphia for this Tampa Bay club. Loving this angle. Obviously, the Mikhail Sergachev injury we haven't really talked about because it did pass. That's huge for this club, but I think they've really rallied around that. That was a nasty one. I'm liking how they're playing, I'm liking how they're looking, and I'm riding with Tampa on the money line as my first pick, minus 133. I mentioned the juice. I'm taking the Winnipeg Jets here on the money line at home, taking a, taking on the St. Louis Blues, minus 200. Yeah, minus 200. That's okay, though, because it's going to be a dub. I know they just squeaked out a one-goal game against Arizona, a one-goal game against Chicago. Wins are wins, baby, and I'm looking at the win column because before that, another big win for this Winnipeg team who have turned it around in their last three. A 6-3 beatdown to a really hot mini wild club. I'm liking Winnipeg on this in this spot. Also, how about the head-to-head? 
eight, one and one, the Jets against the St. Louis Blues in their last 10. St. Louis are one and eight overall in their last nine against Winnipeg, like I just mentioned, and only one victory in their last six trips to the peg. All these head to heads, I don't always go so hard on the recent trends. Right now, the sketchy stretch of this schedule. All of the uh, player moves, perhaps, in the air. It's a bit of a tough time to handicap. I alluded to that yesterday. Let's get back to business. Jets, money line, minus 200. Big, big minus 200 odd. Again, into the parlay. Giddy up. Lock of the night. Man, Patrick Kane, that was such an awesome game for that Detroit Red Wings club. They are going to, I think, rally around that victory and continue to get it done. The Detroit Red Wings, when I look this up, how many wins in a row here? Five straight wins. Calgary, Seattle, Colorado, St. Louis. I know the last one was Chicago, but Chicago showed out, and that was a tough victory. Patrick Kane has been a big reason why. 28 points in 27 games. And over his last five games, four goals, four assists, leading the way, putting shots on net. We were uncertain about what Patrick Kane was going to do coming back from his injury, hip resurfacing injury. We've talked all about how nasty that can be and how hard it can be to recover. Patrick Kane worth the price of admission. Still, those mitts are still silky and 100% on point. Speaking of which, lock of the night, Patrick Kane, any time point. Looking at his career against the Washington Capitals, Washington roll into Detroit. Also a little tidbit, 7-1-2 and two in their last 10 against Detroit. But this is a different Detroit club over the last number of years that Washington has been beating up on. So take those numbers with a bit of a grain of salt. And 22 career regular season games for Patty Kane. 22 career regular season points. That's a point per game by my math, and I'm liking that angle for Patty Kane. And as much as the Washington Capitals have been taking it to the Detroit Red Wings, I actually like this spot for the Red Wings to keep rolling as well. That's another little tidbit. I hope you've really enjoyed today's episode. Those are the bets. Let me recap them quick. Lightning, money line, Jets, money line. Patty Kane, anytime point. Slap them all into your favorite parlay and thank me later. Thank you for joining me for Tuesday's episode. Steele and I will be back with a jam-packed Wednesday episode covering all of the latest in the NHL. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow.